Now if you remember the review that I did on Intel Core Ultra 9 285K, there was another CPU inside this box right here. We had Intel Core Ultra 5 245K and uh, of course benchmarks take time so this is why this one is postponed because there was a motherboard also to check out but regardless of that we're having loads of benchmarks the same way we did with the ultra 9 and the thing is compared to ultra 9 i had a couple of stuttering when we're talking about mouse movements and that also replicated into gaming and compared to ultra 9 where i didn't have any stuttering i didn't have a blue screen of that on any of these and everything was going quite perfectly when we're talking about that because i heard loads of other guys well not loads but a couple of guys had uh, blue screen of that the, some had uh, issues when booting bios or something similar to that i didn't have any of those issues and everything worked perfectly when we're talking about that ultra 9 worked extremely well when we're talking about those kind of consequences problems let's put it this way but the ultra 5 had that stuttering and i didn't know what it was and uh, everything that i did resulted in having bad fps in gaming and not only by having low fps the fps was still there but i just had the lower point was 2.5 fps and then the average was just placed down so all in all that part wasn't so satisfying in terms of benchmarking because every now and then the mouse freezes and then it just points to another direction completely and in those terms i think this is something that needs to be fixed i mean logical but uh, it's uh, something that is either with an update or a microcode i mean i don't know i'm just guessing now and i don't like guessing so just going to stop it there but let's go into benchmarks because you'll see something interesting and you'll see something that isn't and we're having quite loads of stuff so i had a 64 system stability test cpu went up to 62 compared to the ultra 9 which went to 63 uh, 5000 megahertz clock speed consumption was 125.3 watts now if we go in ada 64 cache and si uh, system memory I used the same configuration with the Ultra 9 and we have Kingston Fury Renegade RGB DDR5 2x16 and 8000 megahertz. Read speeds 110.84 gigabytes per second, write speed 98,511 megabytes per second, copy is 107.27 gigabytes per second and latency is 106.2 nanoseconds. So the speeds are there there no problems the same as the on ultra 9 the only problem is the latency which is by 20 almost 20 nanoseconds higher which of course the higher latency that's the worst part now if we go in cryptography and encryption ida 64 aes we have 152,915 megabytes per second which is better than 7900 x 13700K, 14700K, and 12900K, which is outstanding. Then we go in the Go Benchmark bedroom, 1.466 million samples per second, which goes somewhere in the middle of the, in the whole graph. Supercar, 4.079 million samples per second, which is really close to 14700K. Corona 1.3 time to render was 83 seconds. When you compare it to 13600K, it was 68 seconds for that one. So, yeah. But then we go to Corona 10, 7,146,430 rays per second compared to 14700K, which you can see it's 11.4 million. Geekbench uh, 6, Geekbench uh, single thread 2954, which is above 7900X 3D, but close to 7900X and 3900K. And then we go with multi-score 17,150, which is above 7,900X, uh, but less than 7,900X3D. So there is no pattern in this one because in some scenarios, the Ultra 5 really goes high and beats a couple of AMD processors and Intel processors. And then in some with the same processors is battling in the opposite direction. So quite strange. And then we go with Cinebench chart 23. We have... 62 to 60 60 to 64 degrees celsius 5000 megahertz and the average cinnabon score is 22560 
which goes somewhere in the middle again. Single thread score is uh, 2077, multiply ratio 10.94 and it's okay, it really does okay job with that. And the multi for 10 minutes was 22,490 with 18 passes, 137.3 watts consumption, 64 degrees. Solid, I can't say anything against that. But then we go with ASSSD and Auto Disk Benchmark and Crystal Disk Mark when we're benchmarking the Gen 4 SSD and Gen 5 SSD. It literally has almost the same results as the Ultra 5. So Gen 4 really doesn't perform quite well. I don't know for what reason it's losing one gigabyte per second. And uh, then we go with Gen 5, which actually in ASSSD doesn't perform at the maximum. But then we go with Auto Disk Benchmark and Crystal Disk Mark, where it actually outshines and goes 10.8 gigabytes per second. And write speed goes uh, almost up to 9 gigabytes per second. Now, Blender uh, 3, uh, 322 BMW Render, we have rendering going up to 106 seconds. 13600K took 102.3 seconds. This is 106.7 seconds. And the consumption was 139.8 watts with 62 degrees. So when we take into consideration the thermals and the consumption that's outstanding in all benchmarks, I can't argue with that. But this is something that needs to be done when we're talking about this. Now, Jetstream 2, so web browsing, the score was 277,044. It's better than 13600K, it's better than 12900K, which is, again, as I stated before, it in some benchmarks it goes above, in some benchmarks it goes below. 3 Mark CPU profile, better than 7900X. Here we go again. TimeSpy Extreme, of course, it's going to be less than all the presented CPUs here, and uh, I can't say anything about that. I mean, I compared it in this scenario uh, with uh, Ultra 9, so it's quite logical. And then what happened next, I went with PC Mark 10 and I wanted to run that benchmark fully, but unfortunately with two instances running, well not at the same time, but uh, two uh, benches started, it couldn't finish. It ended up with an error and it just ended up as such, which was unfortunate because I really wanted to uh, do comparison with that. So last and, last and least, uh, basically, uh, what I wanted to do is gaming as well. And what I started as um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Shadow of Tomb Raider. And I ended it there because there was no point since it was dropping really bad. And that is something like this. Minimum FPS 1. Average FPS 102. Maximum FPS 229. So it at some point... It just freezes and continues, drops to one FPS, continues. I don't know what's the reason for this and what was happening, but something is here up and I can't explain. Unfortunately, I can't explain. And the same thing happens with Shadow of Tomb Raider. Minimum FPS 1, maximum FPS 339, average 203. So basically, Intel needed this step in some sort of way for Ultra 9 and for Ultra 5. I don't have the Ultra 7, unfortunately, but what I wanted to say is 3900K, 4900K were really hot. I have 12900K still running in my sim rig and that CPU is outstanding. I don't have literally any issues with it. But when we went with uh, 13 and 14900K, we had socket warping, CPU warping, it depended. But for instance, I had 13600K that was bent by one millimeter just because it was, I didn't place it wrong. I placed it like any other. I didn't untie it too much. It was just that. Ultra 9 proved to be really solid when we're talking about workflow, synthetic benchmarks, and in general for creators in those terms, right? But for gaming, it's not in that top segment as it should be. It's not competing that far, as well as the Ultra 5. In some benchmarks, in synthetic benchmarks, in regular uh, real-life scenarios, Ultra 5 is somewhere in the middle as it should be. But in the middle, below the past generation middle, somewhere is going really high, somewhere is going somewhere in the middle, as I stated. So I think this generation was... Um, not a flop, I won't say a flop, because this is a step forward in terms of heating 
and consumption. And in next generation, I really hope that they keep or even lower it down and grab that additional performance and of course stability. I tested it out, just to clarify, I tested it out on MSI MIG Z890 Tomahawk Wi-Fi with Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 RGB 2x16 8000 MHz, uh, Kingston Fury Renegade uh, PCI Gen 4x4 4 4TB and for the Gen 5 I used Team Group T4Z540 Gen 5x4 1TB and the cooling was Lian Lee Galahad 2 LCD 360 so there's no issues with that, paired it up with RTX 4080 Super Gaming X Slim. All in all, I'm quite looking forward what future will bring in this segment, uh, so yeah. That's it for today guys, thanks for sticking by, thanks for watching. If you liked uh, the video or you like the content in general, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, click the notification bell and I'll see you quite shortly in a new one. Thanks for watching, bye bye.